so we just got dropped off at our spot on the lake here um, by the float plane about a half an hour ago. Um, it's a bit late in the day, but we're going to try and make for uh, a run to the top of the mountain here to see if we can get set up in the Alpine. Before we take off, we want to do a couple things. We wanted to set up our cache and also set up a base camp that uh, if we do get rained on up top and get soaking wet, that we've got somewhere to come back to. Okay, so hopefully we get nice enough weather on this trip that we can stay up in the Alpine living in our little uh, two-man pup tent. Uh, but we are expecting some rain, and so we are expecting that we may have to come retreat back down to base camp where we can have, we can be in the trees, out of the weather. We've got a tarp. We've got uh, we've got a bunch of dry firewood already um, pulled down if we need to make a fire in a hurry. We've set up our Northwind tent, which is a pretty bomber tent. It's got lots of room for us if we have to huddle down and dry out and hang out in the tent for a couple days if it gets really foul. Um, so we're leaving this all set up and ready to go. And um, we've got a cache of... Uh, a bit of extra equipment inside the tent and then we've got also got a cache of food, extra food and uh, a couple of beers okay, even. Okay, so the last thing uh, we did before we were about to take off here is uh, we've got a bucket full of uh, extra food and a bag full of uh, refreshments for when we get down off the mountain and uh, we found this conveniently overhanging tree here. We tied a rope to it, tied the rope off here. Um, it's at least out of reach enough that, you know, maybe a black bear can't get at it. Um, hopefully just keep the scent up and out of our camp so we don't attract bears into the camp. But hopefully that'll do for now. All right, and so the last step here is just to hit the trail, get your, get your pack on your back and go for it. So I'm all loaded up with my gun and everything on the pack. I'm about 62 pounds um, and uh, that's about a third of my body weight. So I think that's about what uh, they recommend your maximum backpack weight is. So we'll see how we do. I got a six hour hike ahead of us and uh, yeah. Okay, so I wanted to walk through with you guys what I put in my pack for a, for a day hunt from camp. So I showed you guys what we had in our packs for heading up the mountain to set up for camp. This is what I take with me on, on, an, on, my, on my day hunt where I plan to come back to camp and a few thoughts with that. So obvious stuff like of course I'm going to bring my gun, I've got scope caps on my gun, I've also got a, uh, a bit of, a bit of bl a black electrician's tape over the barrel so that uh, dirt and stuff doesn't get in the barrel. I'm going to bring my binoculars, I'll bring ski poles, uh, in this country it's really steep and shaly so having ski poles uh, to help with stability is, is, is really important. I'll bring a camera with me, uh, I've got uh, gaiters and rain gear. Right now it's, uh, a really, it's a beautiful sunny day uh, so I'm not expecting to have to use it or hoping that we don't have to use it but we've seen the weather turn um, uh, from rain to sun to rain to sun uh, over the course of an hour uh, uh, many times this week so you got to be prepared for it. I brought my down jacket and I've also got a plastic uh, bag to put my down jacket and any of my other layers that I take off into. Again I expect that even though it's sunny now it, it'll likely rain and I want to keep my gear dry. Um, I don't expect to wear the downy and and, uh, and some of the extra layers here uh, but there's always a chance you might wind up spending the night out here and having a down jacket and your rain gear uh, you can tuck in for the night under some shelter and, and make it through the night if you have to. Um, I've got a, a pack cover here. Uh, this is just to, once I got my pack loaded up, I'll, I'll, I'll put this waterproof cover over my pack to keep things dry. Water bottle, uh, my map, my GPS. In this case, I've got my iPhone, which I'm using as a GPS and map tool. Um, my spotting scope comes with me. My, my Eat Wild butt pad uh, for when I'm sitting around glassing. I bring my sort of uh, safety kit here with a couple plastic bags, extra headlamp, uh, uh, some tape and lighters and, and candle. Lots of bugs here, so we've got our bug dope. And then I'll bring my I'll bring my lunch plus an extra lunch. So if I get caught out overnight, uh, I've got a, a day's worth of, an extra day's worth of food with me. Um, that, your hunting license, a few bullets, and you should be good to go. So we've just walked ourselves up and through the um one of the main passes here and we popped out and now we're looking at this piece of country with our spotting scopes. Pretty spectacular. So we came through that pass oh, she, no. a couple hours ago and then climbed up this pass here and 
now we're just kind of hanging out. Hoping at least find some sheep somewhere in uh, this valley here. Looking over yonder, some more mountains we'll not get to. And we can see kind of off both sides of this ridge here. So far we've seen two moose and a caribou, but no sheep today. Okay, so we're well into our sheep hunt now, and I'm learning a few things about sheep hunting. And um, where we had the most success is just by sitting around in really open places where we can see a lot of country. And um, what we've observed is that sheep like to move around. So if you're somewhere that you can see sheep moving down ridges or, or across the mountain tops from one mountain to another, you have a pretty good chance of seeing a few sheep. And uh, and you just sort of watch where they go and hopefully they stop and hang around for a while and then you can climb up there and get a closer look. So I just try to keep my binoculars up or looking through my spotting scope, glassing around and eventually I'll see a sheep pop over a ridge or appear from behind a bush. And so far that's sheep hunting for me. Okay, we're on day three of our sheep hunt and uh, kind of got rained out the better part of yesterday and this morning but we did get up the mountain and it just lifted the fog and we spotted a couple rams and one of them looks pretty good so we're gonna take a run over there and have a closer look. We just um, bed it down, kind of low down in a spot that we can actually get at them which is unique so we're gonna get going and then hopefully we'll Okay, so we're on day four of our hunt. Uh, yesterday afternoon it started raining pretty hard. Uh, we were on our way to look at a couple of rams a bit closer. Uh, we got a look at the rams. Uh, neither of us were comfortable that they were illegal. So we uh, retreated back to camp. Now, on a trip like this, it's extremely important that you don't get wet. So yesterday we got all our rain gear wet. It's hanging up, waiting for the sun to come out and dry out. But until the sun comes out, we're pretty much stuck in our tent here waiting for the rains to stop and waiting for the sun to come out so we can uh, reset and uh, yeah get back to it when we can see a bit more and get around in uh, drier conditions all right so we've just spent uh, the afternoon yesterday and most of this morning in the tent because it's been raining and low cloud cover and uh, not much you can do to hunt sheep in those conditions so we just caught up now and the clouds are lifting, so hopefully we'll be able to get out. We're planning to go for um, a hike uh, right up that valley that's looking ahead of us there. Hopefully we'll find sheep. So here we are on the last day of our um, sheep hunt climbed up into this uh, pass at the top of a mountain. There's Rob looking down. And back somewhere down there is camp. 